Hey guys, welcome back. So this video is part of our video series on tips and tricks for data scientists, deep learning enthusiasts and machine learning enthusiasts. So today we are going to see how we can make use of model checkpoint and how we can utilize this model checkpoint during our custom model training. First, let's understand what is this model checkpoint is all about. So you can clearly observe in the documentation, it clearly says as we use this model checkpoint. So this is a callback that we actually use to save the KRS model or the model weights at a particular frequency. As you already know, when we are training the deep learning model, at first it is going to perform the fit correctly and after some time it is going to perform underfit or sometimes it would try to do the overfit as well. So that means I have to keep a track of how the model is performing. So I'll have to keep a track of it as how the model is performing and once it reaches the optimized level or once it reaches the best accuracy, I want to capture that model training instance uh, state and then I have to use it for my particular application purpose. So obviously I cannot monitor it in a manual manner. For that scenario, we'll make use of various callbacks that are provided by TensorFlow. Now, as a part of this video, we are going to explore as how we can use this model checkpointing. Now, as we progress in this video series, I'll also explain you as how we can create our own custom call callbacks as well. For now, let's understand how we can make use of this model checkpoint. So the documentation here says, if I want to initialize this model checkpoint, so I'll say it as tf.krs.callbacks.model checkpoint and then inside the parenthesis we'll have to specify where exactly I have to save my model. And this is followed by what is the thing that I want to monitor, whether should I monitor this training loss or whether should I monitor my validation loss and so on. So I have to specify what is the value that I'm monitoring. Verbose, so this means whether I should display it in a, a verbal manner. So whatever I'm saving over there, whether I should display a successful message over there or not. Okay. And there is one more argument which is called as save best only. So if I say save best only, it is going to save the best model that has been created. Okay. Normally when I'm training it, I normally set this uh, parameter to be equal to true so that once the training is complete, the saved model which I'll be having on that specific path, it will have the best model trained. Okay, and if I want to save only the weights in such scenarios, I can specify this parameter save weights only as true. And there is something called as mode. So this mode, so let's come down. So this mode is one of auto, min and max. So if save best only is equal to true, the decision to overwrite the current save file is made based on either maximization or minimization of the monitored quantity. All right, for validation accuracy, so it is going to be maximum and for validation loss, it should be minimum. I hope it is intuitive for you. So if I'm monitoring my accuracy, I'll be looking at the maximum accuracy. And if I'm monitoring the loss, I'm looking at the minimum loss. So by default, we are going to set it as auto. So it takes the decision on the basis of the thing that I'm actually monitoring over there. So in auto mode, the mode is set to max if the quantities monitored are ACC, okay? Or if it starts with F measure and it is set to minimum for the rest of the quantities, okay? And there was one more argument that is called as save frequency. So by default, this is an epoch or here we can specify the integer as well. When I'm specifying this epoch, the callback saves the model at the end of each epoch. Okay, so this is how I can make use of this uh, model checkpoint and make sure I'm saving the best model during the course of my deep learning model. So let's go back to our Jipton notebook. Now here I'll start creating a fit for my deep learning neural network. So I'll start by importing my TensorFlow library, import TensorFlow as TF. And hey guys, if you're new to our channel, do check out the deep learning uh, series that we have already uh, started. So we have started the deep learning series and we are already in the unit of convolution neural network till date. So by the time you check out, we might have completed as well, but till date we have completed till the convolutional neural network. Okay, now coming back to our topic. So the version which is currently running in this Google Colab interface is, let's see what is the version that is currently running. All right, now 
The data set that I'm going to use for testing this model convol back is MNIST data set. I'm going to keep it very simple. So I'll say MNIST fashion is equal to TF dot KRS dot data sets dot fashion MNIST. Okay. Now, once this is done, I'm going to separate my training and detest data. I'll say X train comma Y train. And then I'm going to separate my X test comma Y test. All right. Then I'm going to say it as MNIST underscore fashion dot load underscore data. So this is going to load my MNIST fashion data. Now by default, if I check the shape of my X train, see X train dot shape and let me do one thing. I'll display X test dot shape. So individual images are of the shape 28 by 28. And here it clearly says I'm having 60,000 images for my training data. And then there are 10,000 images for my test data. Now for training a deep learning model, let's do one thing. Let's create some split as well from my training data. I'll do one thing. I'll say it as X train full. Okay. I'll say X train full and I'm going to say it as Y train full. From this, we are going to separate the training set and the validation set. So for validation set, I'm just going to select around 10,000 images and I'll keep, I'll keep 10,000 aside for my validation data and I'll get uh, remaining 50,000 for my training data. So I'll say X valid comma X train is equal to X train full. Okay. And I'm going to select first 10,000 images. Okay. And then I'm going to do one more thing, X train full and remaining 10 remaining images. I'll be adding there for my test data. All right. I'll do the similar activity for my Y train and Y valid as well. So I'll name this to be Y train full. Yeah. Y train full. So in this way, I'm separating my training data as well as my validation data. And once this is complete, we'll have to do one more thing guys. So we'll have to normalize the data. So to normalize the data, I'm going to say it as X valid is equal to X underscore valid divided by 255. And then I'll have to do the same activity for my training data as well. So X train and then X test. So this will take care of normalization. Now we are ready to use this data on our model training. So for the example purpose, I'm just going to create a very simple model guys. Now, before I create a model, let's start by creating the callback. Now to create a callback, we'll first have to create this model checkpoint object. So model checkpoint and this is equal to tf dot keras dot callbacks dot model checkpoint. Okay. And inside the parenthesis, I'm going to specify the file name where uh, I want to save the train model. So the file name I'm going to say to be, okay, my train model dot H5. And I'm going to specify the uh, argument save best only is equal to true. And I want to monitor my validation loss. So I'll copy this and I'll use the same thing for my code as well. Now, along with this, let's see what we can include. Let me include verbose as well. I'm going to say verbose is equal to one. So I'm defining my model checkpoint. So this model checkpoint says save the model in this file name and save best the true and monitor my validation loss and display the wordings as well when I'm doing this thing. Okay. Now I'm just going to create a very simple neural network. So in this example, I'll say model is equal to tf.keras.models.sequential. 
I'm going to create a sequential model guys and there's already a video in our YouTube channel please do check out which talks about the various ways that we can create the neural network using TensorFlow. All right. So inside this, the first layer, I'm going to say it as tf dot krs dot layers dot dense and inside the parenthesis, I'll have 30 neurons and I'll add, specify my activation to be equal to ReLU and I'll specify the input of the shape. Let's do this. Okay. My input, each image is of the shape 28 by 28. So 28 by 28 is 784. So I'll give it as 784. But before that, there is one more thing that I want to add. I want to add a flattening layer. So I'll say tf dot layers dot flatten. Okay. So I'll first add my flattening layer. And once the uh, flattening layer is complete, I'll connect this flattened layer into my dense layer. And this has the input as 784. Okay. And this is followed by another dense layer. Let me add one more dense layer as well. So this time I'll keep the same 30 neurons and in my final output layer, I'm going to say I'll have a 10 neurons and the activation is softmax. Okay. I'll delete this input. This is not required for me. Okay, so in this way, I have defined my model and let me display the summary. All right, guys, so this has displayed me a model summary. So I've just modified some things over here in order to make sure that I'm defining my neural network in a correct manner. So I have specified my input shape over here inside my flattening layer because that's my first layer. So I've specified my input shape as 28 by 28 because each image is of the shape 28 by 28 and post that. I'm converting, I'm sending it into my dense layers in my output layer. I'm having my softmax. So this is how my model summary looks like. Okay. So I have my model defined. Now let's go ahead and perform the fit. Now, before I do that, I'll have to do the compile. So model.compile and I'll specify my optimizer as Adam and I'm going to specify my loss is equal to tf dot krs dot losses dot sparse categorical cross entropy okay i'm going to entropy okay i'm going to specify my cross categorical entropy and i'm going to specify my metrics to be equal to accuracy Okay, so this will complete my compile. Now, once the compile is done, we will have to perform the fit. So I'll say history is equal to model dot fit, x train, comma y train, and after that, I'll specify my epochs. Let's give the twenty epochs. And after this, I'll specify my validation data. My validation data is given by x val comma x valid comma y underscore validation data. All right. Now after here inside my fit method, I'll have to specify my callbacks, which I've mentioned earlier. So callbacks is equal to, I'll mention my model checkpointing. See, this is the model checkpoint. And along with this, I can also sp uh, specify any other argument if I want. For now, I'm just going to keep it as it is. And I'll just execute this cell, guys. Okay, so this has started performing the fit. So once at the end of every epoch, observe what is the message that we are displaying. So it says validation loss improved from uh, negative infinity to 43%. Hence, I'm saving the model to this particular file. So we are displaying the message at the end of each epoch about the progress as whether I'm saving my model or not, guys. See, validation improved from this to this and saving the model. As you can clearly see at the end of each epoch, I'm saving my model. So the advantage is I don't have to monitor my validation accuracy or the validation loss from my end. 
my system is going to automatically monitor this and save the best model as my training progresses. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you are new to us, please consider subscribing to us and I look forward to seeing you next time. Till then, take care guys.